Welcome to the Bird Podcast. I'm Shobha Narayan. One of my favorite lines in episode 12 of the Bird Podcast, where I interviewed author and migration expert Scott Byron-Saul, is this. Scott says, "We have this tendency to compare migratory birds with ultra marathoners or Tour de France cyclists, like high-functioning athletes. That insults the bird," he says. And then he proceeds to give examples of these amazing feats that birds do in order to migrate. Scott is crazy about bird migration, as am I, as are most birders, because the jaw-dropping things that birds do is unfathomable to most humans. And the second reason is that birds do what we all talk about. I mean, we all say the earth is one. The birds behave as if the earth is one because they pay no heed to country borders or geographical borders the arctic tern for example migrates some 70000 miles every year and over the course of its lifetime of 35 years this tiny bird which weighs about 100 grams would have flown to the moon and back three times so this is the first of what i call post episode trailers in which i highlight one episode in the past with the hope that you will listen to it we are nearly at 50 episodes and i want to start with bird migration episode 12 scott widensaw and i'll say five things so there are five species that he describes which are amazing in what they do so the bar-tailed godwit for example is a shore bird or a wader as we call it it flies from the canadian subarctic region all the way to new zealand that's 7500 miles or about 12000 kilometers and it does this with no stops no food no sleep continuous flight for 8 days that's like running 126 marathons with no nourishment so that species one the ruby throated hummingbird weighs 3 grams it's a tiny bird that's about the size of this i mean the weight of a spinach leaf it migrates from north america over the gulf of mexico to costa rica and it does it again in one strong flight because it cannot stop flapping its wings it will fall into the gulf of mexico the bar headed geese are favorites for indians because they come to india in they come to karnataka in fact and these birds are amazing because they breed in the russian tundra and then they fly over the himalayas and then they coast down to the plains of india and scott's theory is that these birds were making this trip before the himalayas were in existence so the himalayas are a young mountain and as they as they as they grew the birds just kept flying over the himalayas and there's this beautiful image of this climber on top of mount everest he's trying to take one step after the other his lungs are choked because of lack of oxygen and he can barely move every step is a pain and then he looks up and he sees this flock of bar headed geese flying and they are cackling they are calling it's as if there is no tightening thing in their lungs the bar headed geese are called hamsa in indian mythology and they come to india and what a privilege it is to see them i've seen them in orissa i've seen them in karnataka So how do these birds do this? The red knot for example migrates from New Zealand all the way to the Yellow Sea it flies one straight shot and then it gorges on these worms and marine organisms that are left in these giant tidal flats of the Yellow Sea and then it makes the flight to Alaska and Canada. So how do birds do this? They do two things. One is they do what's called hyperphagia which is they gorge on food and they become almost two and a half times their size so a tiny bird like this a tiny bird about this size like the sandpiper becomes starts jiggling as it walks that's hyperphagia and then they do this other cool thing where they get rid of their organs that they don't need so birds have figured out that the only thing that they need for these mammoth migration is strong pectoral muscles to flap because they do powered flight they are not coasting like the vultures or the black kites that we see on the skies they are powered flight so they get rid of all organs that they don't need so sexual organs diminish shrink to the point of non existence digestive organs the same thing happens because they are not eating or drinking on during the migration anyway 
the liver shrinks because again they are not processing any food so just by getting rid of organs they used only they use what they need imagine if we could do that and then imagine the juveniles so there are these bar tail godwits the red knots the wimbrels that are breeding in the arctic and the subarctic region they lay their eggs the fledglings are born and then mom and dad take off on these migrations leaving behind the young and then the young get the stress they so the that's the other cool word that i learned it's called zugendruh it's a german word and i hope i'm pronouncing it right it's spelled z u g u n r u h e and it means migratory restlessness so all these birds experiences migratory restlessness where they you know they start looking at the towards where they should migrate they start hopping around and then suddenly one day when the time is right they know by instinct and flocks of them take off and the parents take off leaving the young ones behind and you're this young bird who has just born who has just fledged and then you make this migration 7500 miles uh um, 3500 miles 12000 kilometers all by yourself your parents are gone and you're going with a new flock you don't know what awaits on the other side so that's the other cool thing all birds migrate whether it's waders or shore birds that are on the shores of uh, our oceans and water bodies whether it's passerine birds passerine birds are those that perch on branches and these are the ones that we see in urban areas the parakeets that we see flying around passerine birds migrate from africa to europe and then the pelagic birds or the sea birds the albatrosses they you know they fly all over the pacific ocean some 40000 kilometers every year so all types of birds migrate and they uh, they migrate all over the universe so then we come to the end of this uh, post episode trailer why should we care so scott talks about important stop uh, areas stopping areas for these migratory birds the yellow sea is one for example a um, lot of the birds that fly from new zealand on the way to the russian tundra or to the canadian arctic they stop at the yellow sea and they gorge themselves on marine organisms if the yellow sea is destroyed we lose all these birds similarly you know uh, there are other water bodies all along the australasian flyway that need to be preserved and protected for these birds because losing these water bodies means the losing of all the birds that depend on them for the nourishment in order to perform this massive amazing feat of migration so this is the first post episode trailer it's about episode 12 Scott Wyden-Sall describes it in much more poetic detail. Um, I hope you listen to it and listen to all the nuggets of information that he has in his own voice. Bird Podcast is produced by Ulla Sanan and I co-edit you. I'm Shobha Narayan. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching.